Good morning. Today what I'd like to do is continue on my series of the breech bolts. Today what I have is I have a, a Mark III Enfield from 1913. She was my first, this is Pearl, and she was my first uh, gun in the collection. I got her, she was sporterized. Um, I replaced the barrel and replaced a lot of the things that, uh, that went with it. And um, and here she is today. She fires 303 Brit. Um, she's she's a, a good gun. But what we're here for is I, I did a story on her. If you want to look back on this on it, uh, you can go back and look and and I think I did a story on her and her Indian cousin um, Arjun. Uh, they're both uh, very similar. Uh, but anyways, go back and look at it. It's it's a good story. Um, this is the bolt. The bolt is a locks is cocks on closing. If you look back here at the cocking device, you can see where it sticks out. So it's it, there's a sear underneath here that the cocking device gets hits on. Here's the sear here, or one of them. So what you have is you have this thing sitting inside. The cocking device comes along, gets caught on that. You continue to push the bolt in, stretches out the spring that's the uh, for the firing pin, so that when you pull the trigger, what the trigger does is it pushes it like that, and when it pushes it like that, then the um, the cocking device is released, and there you have it. That's the uh, end field. This bolt has not changed much uh, since its introduction back in the um, late 1800s there are some changes I have a a um, number four which is from World War two I have uh, uh, an example of that and you can see that there are some uh, there are some differences so this is the the safety is over here let me see it and this is the safety here and what the safety does is when you pull it back there's a little I'll show you when I get the uh, the bolt out there's a little thing that comes up that blocks the firing pin from uh, from being really uh, the cocking device from being released and that stops the, uh, the firing pin to get the the bolt out you have this rotating bolt head you bring it down all the way and you can see it down here and you just let me do it in a way that you can see it. it's all the way down and you push that like that and it goes down inside that inside here Try to find the right light here. Mm. Let's see if I can get a flashlight on this, maybe. Man, that flashlight's pretty bright, so that's not going to work. But anyway. can't really see it but anyway trust me the uh, the sear is sitting right here well there it is and you can imagine that thing sitting inside there so there's your sear okay now before we go on um, there's two locking bolts for the uh, locking lugs for the bolt here you have the one that's sitting on the bottom right here. And you have one. This big long piece right here is the other locking bolt. You can see where they line up. And they have to line up because you want an even pressure on the two of them so that when you lock it, and you can see, let's see push it in 
and turn it and you can see where the uh, the locking bolt the well, locking lug sits right there and inside here there's a uh, space for this here they're rounded because what they do is they push the when you close it they push the bolt head up against the opening of the uh, the receive, uh, receiver so that uh, the chamber so that way there you get a good fit this is the the rotating bolt head it comes off and I'll show you here there's your extractor it's a pretty good size extractor your bolt head when it goes inside your uh, inside your receiver it goes in like that then you tilt it down there's a rail along the side of the receiver that this fits into so it keeps the bolt steady when you push it in and out when you bring it out all the way there's no rail which is why you can push it up and pull it out but that that rail keeps your bolt head steady as it goes in and then when you turn your uh, turn your bolt it stays on the rail and your uh, lugs push it up and hold it nice and tight up against the, uh, the receiver so that's your that's your bolt this is your cocking device like you have for uh, for all the, all the other bolt uh, action ones bolt action uh, uh, receivers on the back here I'll show you what this is this is a uh, get the screw. when we put it back together again I'll show you how uh, how important it is so the first thing you do is you take that screw off then you take your bolt head off on there pretty good bolt head bolt heads come in, in different sizes um, you know we've talked about uh, about uh, headspace and we're not gonna go through headspace again but the headspace um, for the 303 is done by its uh, the lip on the 303 round sits on top of the mouth of the chamber and then this pushes up against it so what they call it, that's the headspace so if you want to decrease your headspace you get a bigger bolt head they come in size 0 up through size 3 3 is not usually one of the ones that uh, people use it goes up to 2 um, this one here it doesn't have it on it it should have it on but if you look at the bolt heads they'll have uh, they'll have what size they are this works as the original bolt head that came with the the gun so um, so it works just fine well there it is it's a zero it's a size zero so and as you go up now um, you have to be careful because they go up in increments uh, if just because you, you say well I need um, a large bolt head and you go online and you buy a number one or a number two and there's a graph of, of the uh, sizes that they are the range um, you have to be careful because that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the size that it's gonna be uh, because people may have mucked with it a little bit and when that happens then um, you don't get so when you get it you have to measure it and make sure that it's the right size board so here we have the bolt firing pin sticking out you have your uh, your cocking piece the end fields to get the firing pin out you have to have a special tool this is the special tool it slides in and you get it on the actual bolt itself there's two um, uh, 
notches on the bolt head that this fits into so you're able to turn it so now it's it turns out there's your firing pin cocking piece comes off because that's where it was uh, connected to the screws goes up inside and it connects it there's your two grooves that that piece goes into that uh, tool goes into firing pin it's a pretty simple bolt actually they're all pretty simple I think uh, they're made that way so that people can uh, can mess with them out in the field I think is but if you you got if you're out in the field you got to have this I'm sure there are tricks around it that they found if they didn't have the tool how to do it but this is the easiest way to do it on the bolt head on the bolt head the extractor is there there's a small screw right there that you have uh, and that that will release the uh, the extractor with its spring so that if you need to take it out there's no need to take it out uh, for, for the most part unless it's broken or uh, something's wrong with it so so anyway so what we're going to do is we're going to put this back together again so what we're going to do is we're going to put the the bolt back together we got uh, put the cocking piece on back in look on the back I think you can see there's the firing pin coming in now on the firing pin on the back there I think see how you can see that there's a little cutout the cutout is for this locking screw I'm not gonna do it here because it's a trial and error thing but um, there is a, a way to adjust the protrusion of your firing pin out of the out of the head bolt head and what you have to do is right now you would put your bolt head on then you would measure how much it protrudes out using your calipers if it's too much then you come back here you get your tool and you screw it in a little bit more and you keep doing that back and forth until you get where it's supposed to be um, normally it's right there at the uh, at the end when you when you're screwing in the firing pin that's usually where you need to have it I'll go back and redo this before I take it out shooting but it just takes a while because you get a back and forth back and forth so you get it right where you want it then you just screw your bolt head back on okay make sure it's on there and it's on there good and tight this This is the bolt head out of my number four, which is uh, 1942. And you can see that there's a lot of similarities between the two. This also has a rotating bolt head. And instead of having a, a grip on a rail, this has this little line here which goes into the rail uh, which holds the bolt head in place but I mean they're, they're very similar now you put your 
to put your bolt back inside the, the rifle. You hold it, you make sure that that's lined up with the with that that large lug. You push it in so you can't push it in anymore. Push down on the, the bolt head and it goes in. Now, one of the things, and, and it happens to me too, is when you have your your bolt head, if it's not screwed down all the way, and it looks like it is, but it's not, what's gonna happen is it'll go in, but it won't close. And you say, man, what happened to my bolt? Well, what happened to the bolt is that the uh, this thing is not screwed on all the way. And just screw it on and there you have it. And <laughs> okay, now that we've had our Parkinson's moment. Um, with the with the, the bolt uh, one of the things that you really need to be careful of too is after when you line this up with this you have to make sure your cocking device is also lined up or else it, it won't go in and um, you know it, so there you go there there Okay. So there you go, and uh, there you go. There's your your uh, infield bolt, and hopefully uh, that'll help you a little bit. All right. Thank you.